Welcome back to Fireside Chats with Gaslight. Today we have Bill. Bill, Bill, Bill. Nigh the science guy, but really he is Bill, our software guy, who is awesome. Welcome, Bill. Are you so excited to join us today? Thank you. Yes, I'm terribly excited. Can you oh, tell? Good. I'm so <laughs> glad. Um, well, welcome. And we're going to start off. How did you get into software? How did I get into software? Well, the first computer I ever programmed was back in 1979 as a freshman at the University of Cincinnati. I wrote Fortran. Oh, man. And it was kind of fascinating, but there wasn't, to my knowledge, a computer science degree offered at UC at the time. Anyway, so life intervened, and I went off in the Marines for four years, and then I was a mechanic at Delta Airlines for 17 years, and then I broke my collarbone collarbone playing hockey mm -hmm. and they set me behind this desk and these 386 uh, workstations started popping up all around Delta. This is 1991. And so they put me in charge of a thing called capital equipment and I, I was organizing it on a legal pad. Um, and then I, I said, these computers, they, they talk about databases and stuff. And I said, I want to learn more about databases and I want to be able to, you know, find tools or parts by keywords other than just by the part number, which no one ever knows or the tool number. Mm -hmm. So like I want a wrench and it needs to be 10 millimeter and it needs to be deep socket or whatever, whatever. Um, and so I just started writing uh, database applications and then later got into uh, um, writing uh, um, office, Microsoft office apps for KPI tracking key performance indicators for Delta airlines in Cincinnati. And, um, and that was it, a lucky break during a hockey game. Oh, man. So, and then I got my computer science degree in 2002, finally went back to UC and finished my degree nice. and got hired by Children's, and the rest, as they say, is history. It's history. Man, that is crazy. How, how badly did you break your collarbone? Um, the, the doc in the ER said it was like a chicken bone fracture because it was under compression, when I was, it was during a check, a guy would kind of line me up and I saw him coming out of the corner of my eye. So I kind of leaned my shoulder into him and I had these uh, shoulder pads that had a plastic cap on top of them. Mm -hmm. And that cap pinched down and, and the shoulder was under compression at the time. And when that pad hit that collarbone about right in the middle, it just splintered like a chicken bone. Oh man. And then it, so they had to put me in this apparatus that pulled my shoulder back and was like the most excruciating pain I've ever felt in my crazy. entire life. But it was cool for a while because I could pull my shoulder out in front of me, you know, like the collarbone is interesting that, it, you know, that's one of the things it prevents, keeps your shoulder in place. Oh, yeah. Well, I could pull my shoulder out in front. It was a little painful, but it was kind of neat that I could do it. A parlor anyway, trick, you know. I digress. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Uh, okay, so that is awesome. And then how about Gaslight? How did you find Gaslight? Uh, let's see. We Jeez. formed Gaslight in 2009. Uh, Chris Nelson and I were working as independent uh, software developers uh, working for clients um, and fellow co-founders Rob Biedenharn and Dwayne Greenwood. Uh, uh, Rob was uh, off on his own uh, had, and had been for many years. Um, but uh, Dwayne was, I met through a company called Script Safe out in Loveland. We worked together um, and uh, he was still there, but he was looking to exit and um, we we're talking about opportunities and we noticed that, you know, we had a strong agile software development community in Cincinnati, but no local consultancy. Um, we were working out of the office of uh, Edge Case up in Columbus, based out of Columbus. They had two developers in Cincinnati. Um, Jim Wyrick and uh, Scott Barron, mm -hmm. um, uh, and they, those two didn't want to move to Columbus, so Edge Case set them up with an office in Cincinnati, and they had plenty of extra space, so Chris and I were renting desks there, and, uh, you know, they were tossing us little side gigs and stuff, so it was kind of this nice uh, arrangement with Edge Case, which later became NEO, um, or were acquired by NEO, um, but anyway, so they said they had no designs on Southwest Ohio, and um, they allowed us to run our consultancy out of their consultancy for uh, a little while. And uh, we just kind of got together and figured, you know, let's let's start a consultancy in Cincinnati based around Agile using Ruby on Rails. Rails had kicked off um, in 2005 and six, I believe, and uh, 
Um, so that was up and going and, and allowed us to deliver value quickly um, for our clients. And uh, we didn't know, need no stinking designers. Hey. You know, we, we could just, you know, we, we'll figure this out. We're smart guys and we'll, we'll figure out this business. And so uh, we obviously we learned a lot over the years and grew in uh, the, our, our strength was not knowing you know, what we needed to know, we knew we had to find people who could help us learn and grow. Um, and design was a big part of that bringing in design um, and handing a lot of the uh, the ideation of uh, projects kind of at the beginning at their outset to the designers was a massive shift for us and a great yeah. benefit. So yeah, good Woo. Yeah. for designers. Um, well, that's awesome. Okay, so you've been with Gaslight since day zero. Day zero and before. <laughs> and before. What is your favorite part about Gaslight? Through The, the snacks, without a doubt, the snack. No, um, <laughs> snacks are good. Um, you know me, I'm a snacker. I, I, I've seldom met a snack I didn't love. But, um, uh, you know, you got to say the people. Um, both uh, employees, uh, past uh, and present and our clients also um, just meeting people who are working hard to make a difference and make a change um, you know sure clients are motivated by delivering value and in, in, in uh, you know making money um, but if you uh, when you get to talk to them and uh, um, uh, get to know what it is that they're trying to do the I think the best clients, the clients that excite us as uh, Gaslight uh, employees are those where people are trying to have a transformative and a positive effect, not only on their local economies, but, you know, globally and, and amongst their employees and um, with the ownership's help rather than uh, as an impedance or whatever. So um, definitely the people, um, both clients and, and fellow Gaslighters, um, and even those that have left us. So, um, you know, I still love connecting and talking with, with all those, the, that bunch way back to the early founders mm -hmm. and Ed Summerfield, who was the first, uh, you know, owner that we lost. And, uh, he went to IPC and it was, man, it was devastating to us, but he's a great guy and he had to do his own thing and it's cool. Okay. And he's still an awesome dude and, uh, love hearing from him. So, That's awesome. well, Thank you for joining us today and all that, that crazy history. It's always fun to chat with the people who founded Gaslight and you make it what it is. So we love you guys. Great. Thanks, Katie. Love you too. And uh, love this little fireside chat thing. It's pretty awesome. So keep right. it up. Awesome. Well, thank you. All right. Everybody, thanks for joining again. We will see you next time and we are out.